Astrup, Astrup emot vänner och familje. Arnenes senior kom till fots den sista knäcka upp till Holmenkollen kapell för att ta ett farväl med nevuen. I den private ceremonien var Nes sine sju barn i centrum. Deira hälsning var låten Tears in Heaven av Erik Klepten. Och Nes sin exkone Diana Ross sang ett vers av Amazing Grace. De fem äldste barna bar kista. Länge bak kom Diana Ross som fick ett stöttande hand av präst Per Anders Norenge. Jag försökte lägga vikt på att detta måste bli en värdig avsked med ett stort menneske, ett stort menneske för de alla närmaste. Naturen som Arne Ness var så glad i hade tagit på sig fin stasen idag för att ta ett allra sista farväl samman med hans näraste vänner och familje. Så skulle de samlas för första gång. Hans första kone Filippa och Kumlin Dorey och datteren Leona Ness som stod sin far så väldigt nära. Hans onkel, filosofen Arne Ness senior och hans andra kone Diana Ross med barna Ross Arne och Evan Olav. Och samboen hans till det sista Camilla Astrup med den äldsta av de två barna Niklas Amadeus på armar. Och det skulle bli en gripande time i Holmenkollen kapell. Trompetisten Ole Edvard Antonsen spelade sitt eget stycke Landscapes nettop med tanke på Arne Ness sitt nära familjens vän prästen Per Anders Norengen som på engelsk skulle försöka finna ord som ger tröst i förtvivelsen. De äldste barna tog den tunga böra och bär sin egen far sitt kiste de sista metrarna som med Arne Ness sin närmaste klatrevän från New Zealand. Alle var starkt präga av sorga och sorg. Som bor Camilla Astrup lägger försiktig hand på kista som ett allra sista kärting. Men det var först då bilen med kista. What was your first reaction when you heard about the accident in South Africa? I, I'm very intuitive, and I have like I don't know if it's a sixth or seventh sense, but the at this time um, I had a feeling there was a very strange, almost negative energy around me, and I was trying to explain this to my daughter, and I said, Rhonda, it's a good thing that I believe in prayer because something's happening and I don't know what it is. And I think if I pray, maybe it'll go away. Because something's going on, there's an energy that I'm not understanding what's happening. And I'm not happy. And I took to my bed. My other daughter called me and she said, Mom, do something good for yourself today. And I said, I don't know what to do. And I said, maybe I'll wash my hair. And then, maybe an hour or so later, the phone rang, and it was Christopher. And I said, no, don't tell me. It's as if I knew. And the first thing I did was call my daughter Rhonda to come to be with me before I went to get my sons home from school. Because I didn't want to tell them by myself. So it was very difficult. Um, there is no way to tell your sons these things. We got right on an airplane and came straight to London to be with the older uh, kids, Katinka, Christopher, and Leona. Because as a parent, they're my children too. And um, I needed to be with them to put all the children together. Um, and I needed to be strong for them. And I am strong. Um, but the only closure that's going to be for me, I guess, is time. That's the only closure at all, I think, that can be. Is time. And um, and he, I just know you'll be missed terribly. And when I arrived and, and the driver picked me up and he said, you know, Arna Ness was a great man. And I said, I know. You know, so 
even the drivers and the taxi drivers and he was ins inspirational and people knew him and that makes me feel good, it makes my sons feel good, they were in the car with me and they feel they feel proud of their dad and uh, and I am proud to have been a part of his life. He brought things to my life that I, places that I would have never gone, I would have never gone to base camp of Everest and I would have never gone, met Sherpers and I would have never gone to places that I I would have never, I mean, I've traveled places, but not the places that Arna took me to. And I met people and that I would have never met. Uh, he brought things to my life that I would have never known. Uh, and he laughed at me because I didn't like the cold. See, he would laugh at me and I would shiver. I mean, my teeth would chatter and he would just laugh at me because I didn't like the cold. And uh, I would put clothes on and he would ski backwards because I couldn't ski and, you know, he would laugh at me all the time. And, but I thought he, I think he thought it was cute. And when I couldn't ski down the mountains, he would put me on his back and ski down with me because I'm a featherweight. I'm not, I don't weigh very much. So he would ski with me on his back down, down the mountains. And um, I just, you know, I, I will truly miss him, but I, as Katinka said, He's always there for me because as I look at my sons, I see him. My sons have his body and I see his ski jump of a nose. He, they have his, you know, he's there in them and they have his spirit. And, um, and, and my sons love adventure the same as he does. And uh, the mountain climbers, the Everest climbers were there today. and. Uh, they promised to uh, keep this in, inside my boys. And uh, Eric Lavinas and Bjorn, they promised to keep my boys here in Norway and to make sure that, uh, that Norway is a part of their lives. And I promised to make sure they stay here, to always come back. And you guys have to help me. Sure. Just like that, um, my children lost their father here in a tragic accident. So I brought all my kids with me this trip. So we're all here and it's, it's a very emotional trip for us to be here. Uh, and we're excited. Will we come back for vacations? Absolutely. And that's maybe just <clears throat> something that's been talked about. With we're all lucky tonight. Our next artist is a legend. When I first met her, she was one of three Supremes. Now, she is simply supreme. I've been waiting all night to say this. Put your hands together for one of the truly great singers of our time, ladies and gentlemen, Diana, Diana Ross. Ross.
that you have a little trepidation about. Anything we're going to see that... Oh, you're going to... I mean, you see a lot. Um, Come on, tell me. We have a, a father episode yeah. coming up soon. Um, this, this some stuff. We definitely decided, you know, and I think we, we definitely pushed certain limits and even for ourselves and stuff that we wouldn't normally probably talk about. You know, I, I talk about my father passing away. Um, and I haven't climbed since he passed. My father died climbing um, in South Africa. And climbing. I climbed... Yeah, climbing, yeah. He was a climber. He climbed all the seven peaks, Mount Everest, K2, all those. Mm. And um, he died climbing when I was almost like 15 years old. Um, and I haven't climbed... I used to climb with him, so did my brother. My brother still climbs. And I haven't climbed since his passing. And I climb on the show for the first time. So that was a, it's a, a thing. Yeah. Um, I really cried. But I think we touch on a lot of things. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I feel like what we, you know, every piece of it at times is scary because, you know, you're giving yourself to the world. 